What is going on, boys? It has been a long six months, hours and hours and hours in the gym. And guys, about half the time I stepped in the gym, before I even started my workout, I was like, <laughs> I'm not gonna get through this workout. I don't wanna be here. You know, for those of you guys that don't know, the reason I originally stopped bodybuilding was because I didn't wanna take it to the next level. You know, I thought as a natural, I didn't have a future as an IFBB professional bodybuilder. But, you know, I decided to share some tips and tricks from my past, you know, eight, nine years of working out, and those videos weren't received too well. So, you know, this is six month transformation. I've put on about, you know, 15, 20 pounds of lean mass. And, and before we discuss the experience in detail, uh, we're gonna take some measurements. I don't really care too much about the shoulder and the chest measurements. Uh, for me, the arms are a real telltale sign of how much mass you've put on. If I remember correctly, I started around 14 and a half to 15 inch arms. Uh, hopefully we're you know at least at 16 now. Uh, I haven't measured on camera or checked progress since, uh, since I started. So arm flexed. Tape, tape, tape is super tight, guys. This tape is super tight. Tape is super tight. About 16 and a quarter. You know, maybe if I pumped up a little more, you know, we could get to 16 and a half. I guess we could try it this way too, like straight up. So right arm is just under 16. Left arm a little bigger, just over 16. So an inch and a half on the arms in about a six month time span of working out. Uh, back when I was like 180, 185 pounds, I remember my arms measuring like pumped up around 17 and a half inches. You know, so if I do decide to continue this progress, you know, I'm sure I can get that extra inch back on my arms within a few more months of weightlifting. I can't even get this stupid thing around my shoulders. So we'll just measure my calves and call it a day. I, I don't think, I don't think my calves have grown. Maybe like a quarter inch or something. I think they were 15 and a half inches when we started. Yeah, now flex, they're about 16. So maybe I put a half an inch on the calves. I think the real telltale sign is the amount of weight I put on without a real increase in body fat. So let's take a look at the scale. So let's check the weight on the scale. 156.6. So I haven't really gained much weight over the past two or three months. Uh, it seems like everything is going pretty slowly. Uh, I'm guessing I can get back up to, you know, 160, 165. Uh, it's going to be another, you know, three, four, five months. Some of you guys complain that I didn't really hit any poses in my last video as well as the initial video. Uh, so we'll try to do, you know, the full lineup of the bodybuilding poses. Not too shabby for six months, eh boys? Eh, as you guys could tell, I don't uh, work out my legs. Um, I mean, you know, they're lean. I don't, I've never worked out my legs. I, I didn't think it looked good from the aesthetic standpoint. And you know, if I was one of those guys that had like the really narrow waist, the, the wide shoulders, that natural V taper, I probably would work out my legs. But you know, since I have, you know, slightly wider hips and slightly narrower shoulders, I feel like my body frame looks better without the super muscular legs. That being said, you know, if I weigh, you know, 156, 157 right now, if I had muscle on my legs that was developed as much as my upper body, you know, you could argue at least, you know, seven, eight, nine, ten 10 pounds of muscle mass per leg. So things are a bit deceiving. You know, I might be 5'8", you know, 156 pounds between 10 and 12% body fat, you know, with 16, 16 and a half inch arms, but, if I worked out my legs, I should really weigh about like 170, 175. 
So the upper body mass is a little bit misleading for my body weight, you know, as well as, you know, the bone structure, the joint size. Now, a lot of you guys have been asking about my routine. I will say it is a full body routine every single day, incredibly high volume, pretty unorthodox rep range, rest time, exercise choice. Uh, I will do a separate like training course, workout program uh, that I will have available for you guys in the near future. Hopefully all of this uh, nonsense stops right now. You know, once the world is back to normal, uh, I'll jump right on that. Uh, but if you guys do want like one-on-one -on -one coaching, you can reach out to me via email. Uh, that is the routine that I did in 2015 for my fitness competition. That is the routine I have developed after, you know, eight, nine years of doing a traditional bodybuilding routine and figuring out what's correct. I know in the fitness hemisphere that full body routines have become, you know, more popular this year. Uh, but, you know, my routine is something I've worked on for a long time. And when I come out with it, you know, there's definitely be some different things that you guys haven't heard of before. That being said, my routine is part of the reason I don't really want to be in the gym anymore. It's very monotonous. It's not exciting. You know, you can move heavy weight around sometimes if you want to, but it requires a lot of focus, very, very high volume. And the few guys that I've consulted that have done the routine, you know, they didn't want to stick to it because of how boring and monotonous it was. Uh, but to move on to how, you know, the few months have gone, you know, those first three months were, were pretty bad. I had the iron overload issues, the liver problems, you know, I wasn't eating enough food. I wasn't able to get carbohydrates, protein, or fats into my diet. So the progress was kind of slow. Uh, and my sleep was horrible. I was sleeping like two, three, four hours a night. I uh, just had really bad insomnia. Months four, five, and six have been better, but I'm still not 100%. You know, there's still a few nights here and there where I'm not sleeping, a few days where I'm not able to get the calories in that I want to. So I'm gonna prolong this to nine months, maybe even 12 months, and I don't expect my body to be able to recover from, you know, the iron overload even that quickly. It might take a little bit longer, but you know, if I'm able to put in, you know, a few more months, I should be able to get to where my peak muscularity was, you know, years and years ago. So I definitely want to keep going uh, because the progress is, is just speeding up. It's going faster and faster and faster. And as soon as I get to that point where I think I'm at that kind of threshold, then I'll decide what I want to do. You know, I mean, it's kind of like a fantasy to become a natural physique pro. Uh, I don't think I have the muscle mass or the size to do that as a natural. I don't think my genetics are good enough. I think guys that have really good genetics might be able to become natural physique pros, but they'll never compete at the highest level. Uh, I think there's like a five foot eight and above weight division, and there's a five foot six to five foot seven weight division. If I was able to sneak into, you know, the five foot six to five foot seven division and compete, I, I might be okay. I still don't think so though. Uh, it's, you know, it's unfortunate, you know, the, the drug usage, that type of stuff. It, it really bottlenecks naturals to some degree. That being said, you know, I could always compete in the natural competitions and, uh, and do that type of stuff. But even with the natural competitions, you have people, you know, who use drugs in the past and all of that stuff. Diet wise, it's been carnivore with honey thrown in here and there. And the reason I'm eating honey isn't because, you know, I want to use carbohydrates. It's because I can't tolerate the animal fat. You know, when I eat the fat, you know, iron comes out of my liver with the bile and I feel really crappy. So uh, it's more about me avoiding fat and needing to find honey or a carbohydrate as an energy source. Usually two meals a day, uh, I'll eat as much as I'm comfortable eating. I would say on the low end, I'll have a pound and a half to a pound and three quarters of meat per day. On the high end, you know, two and a half pounds to two and three quarter pounds of meat. Uh, trying to get some omega-3s in once or twice a week. You know, I'm taking vitamin D supplements. I'm taking vitamin K2 supplements. Uh, a couple other like natural organ-based supplements here and there. Uh, I mentioned on a live stream that I was thinking about using creatine, uh, but I decided against it and I'm gonna keep it 100% natural. Uh, I think I would have put on a couple more pounds of like water weight if I was using the creatine. In regards to fitness content on my channel, I can't actually film in the gym I work out at, but Frankie Boy has been building a gym in his garage. It should be complete in about a week or two or three. And again, as soon as all this nonsense that's going on in the world dies down, hopefully we can get back to that. Otherwise, you know, my ghost will have a nice gym to work out at. So thank you guys for joining me. If you could please like the video, subscribe, of course, hit that bell icon. 
If you guys want to support me further, you know, we have the, you know, male testosterone boosting supplement on organsupplements.com. We have Frankie's free range meat for high quality animal foods at an affordable price. We're restocking on a bunch of stuff next week. So definitely keep an eye out. You can go to Frankie's naturals for minimal ingredients, minimally processed hygiene and cosmetic products. And if you'd like to go to frank I have my consultations available as well as my book and carnivore diet course. Thanks again for joining me guys. Enjoy the rest of your night. The 17 inch steel pipes. Oh, all right, we're done.